Hello, people. I am Jabby Kowei, joined by Sintel Kowei. What's good? We're looking at a... a mm, <laughs> We're looking at another <laughs> large short films, Anna Cool. I think it's directed by Sujoy Ghosh, and it's a Royal Stag Barrel Select large short films. This has 55,000 upvotes and 1.5 thousand down, so the vast majority really enjoyed this from according to the votes. Thank you, Large Short Films, for allowing us to react to this, number one. And if you guys enjoy what we're about to watch, make sure to go back to the original video if you could and give their original video a like and subscribe to Large Short Films. Here we go. Playing footsie with me, man. Sorry. <laughs> so, ये क्या-क्या कर सकते हैं? ये नहीं, अनुकूल. हाँ, sorry. अनुकूल. क्या-क्या कर सकते हैं ये? जो आप कहेंगे. इसके अंदर सारे काम प्रोग्राम्ड हैं। ऊपर से हमारा अनुकूल बहुत एडवांस्ड मॉडल है। आपसे भी सीखेगा। मुझसे क्या सीखेगा? आपके सिद्धांत, आपके प्रिंसिपल्स, आपका हर चीज को देखने का नजरिया। आप इसके रोल मॉडल होंगे। जो भी आप सिखाएंगे सीख जाएगा। बिल्कुल जैसे कोई स्टूडेंट अपने टीचर से हमारे अनुकूल की एक और खासियत है, वो कभी नहीं सोता। 24 घंटे आपकी सेवा में रहेगा। तो ओवरटाइम का क्या? No overtime, no holidays. That's interesting. इन्हें पढ़ने का शौक है? बहुत शौक है पढ़ने का। किताबों के पीछे तो ये बिल्कुल पागल है। अनुकूल? सर, आपको मेरे घर जाके काम करने में कोई अतराज तो नहीं है। नहीं सर। सर, एक इम्पोर्टेंट बात है। हाँ कहिए ना। That's a gremlins moment. आज तक ये मेरा घर था, आज से हमारा घर है। वेलकम हो, कम। आओ। इतने सारे किताबें। हिंदी टीचर होने का यही फायदा होता है। Getting some black mirror feels. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. For some odd reason, I know it's a weird thing to say, but just reminds me of Jake Gyllenhaal. His behavior. Like 
Nightcrawler. Mm, oh, good one. Nikuj bhaiya. Arre Ratan, aaja aaja aaja. Ha, bye. Hey, bas 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 bas. Kahan hai tu? Tu to pichle hafte aane wala tha. Phone bhi nahi kiya, aaya bhi nahi. Kya kahan gaya bhai ta aajkal? Kya chal raha hai? Naukri dhoond raha tha. Acha. Mili koi? Na. I thought this was going to be direction. चाय पीएगा क्या भैया चाय चाय मेरे धर्म के खिलाफ की है है ना अनुकूल अनुकूल जी सर हाँ अनुकूल सुनो ये रतन दादा है ये मेरे कजन ब्रदर है नमस्ते सर कजन ब्रदर तो एक काम करो दादा के लिए एक विस्की बनाओ खूब सारा विस्की डाल के थोड़ा सा पानी जी सर और खाने के लिए कुछ बढ़िया सा बना के लेके आओ और सर आपके लिए हाँ हाँ मेरे लिए भी लेके आओ आज दोनों भाई मिलके पियेंगे जी सर है ना <laughs> ये तुझे नहीं समझ में आया है ना <laughs> रोबोट चौरंगी रोबोट सर्विस से लेके आया उसको परसों बिल्कुल ही उम्र लगता ना ये क्या हो गया तुम्हारा अपना भाई जिसकी नौकरी ऐसे ही एक रोबोट की वजह से गई और तुम इन्हीं को नौकरी दे रहे हो तेरे नौकरी जाने का उससे क्या लेना देना है Shit happens. Happens. जब तुम्हारे सर के ऊपर ये हैपन होगा ना पता चलेगा सर भेजे मुझे ये सही है पिएगा तब दिमाग ठंडा हो जाएगा तुम रखो नौकरी वापस चाहिए बोलो दोगे कौन सी नौकरी सर वही जो पिछले पंद्रह साल से मैं कर रहा था मैं समझा नहीं सर क्यों क्यों नहीं समझा तुम लोग तो बहुत स्मार्ट होते हो हम इंसान से कई गुना ज्यादा हम इंसान तो सिर्फ रोबोट बनाने तक ही स्मार्ट होते हैं और बनने के बाद तुम हमसे भी ज्यादा स्मार्ट हो जाते हो कितनी अजीब बात है है ना चल देखते हैं तुम कितने स्मार्ट ये क्या है ये तो आए नहीं सर क्या बात बहुत स्मार्ट ये क्या सर ये ये तो किताब है सर वेरी गुड दो मुझे जी सर अबे चुकी है कहाँ गई जल स्मार्टनेस वेरी गुड क्या कर रहा है क्या कर रहा है पागल हो गया है क्या तुम पागल कब तुम हो गए हो क्या कर रहा है क्या कर रहा है कुछ चिप्स डैमेज हुए थे मैंने रिप्लेस कर दिए हैं सर आपको वो इम्पोर्टेंट बात याद है ना आप किसी भी रोबोट के साथ बुरा व्यवहार नहीं कर सकते उसे नहीं मार सकते और अगर मारा तो लीगली अनुकूल को ये हक है कि वो मारने वाले को हाई वोल्टेज इलेक्ट्रिक शॉक दे दे इस बार आपका भाई बार बार बच गया है नेक्स्ट टाइम That should not be built into their programming. Skynet, baby. Yeah, that 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 <laughs> the what do you call it? Self defense should not be built into the programming. Sir. 
सर कुछ चाहिए आपको नहीं मैं एक्चुअली सो नहीं पा रहा था तो बस ऐसे देखने चला आया था कि तुम ठीक तो हो मुझे तो कभी भी नींद नहीं आती है <laughs> ये कौन सी किताब पढ़ रहे हो गीता इंटरेस्टिंग ये मेरी फेवरेट किताब हो तुम्हें कैसी लग रही है अच्छी है लेकिन कुछ कुछ बातें समझ में नहीं आ रही है तो तुम तो हमेशा मेरी मदद करते हो और अच्छे चलो आज मैं तुम्हारी हेल्प करता हूं बैठो बताओ क्या नहीं समझ में आ रहा ये जो नीला आदमी है ये <laughs> अनुकूल इनको नीला आदमी नहीं कहते इनको कृष्ण भगवान कहते हैं लेकिन रंग तो नीला है हाँ उसके पीछे कहानी है कि बचपन में भगवान को विष दिया गया था भगवान ने पी लिया था तो उनका रंग नीला हो गया वो मरे नहीं नहीं मर के से सकते हैं वो तो भगवान है मैं भी नहीं मर सकता नहीं वो लेकिन ये दो अलग अलग बात तुम वो छोड़ो बताओ कि तुम्हें गीता में क्या नहीं समझ में आया वो बताओ सर यहाँ कृष्ण भगवान ये अर्जुन जो आदमी है उसे अपने फैमिली वालों को अपने कजिन से अपने अंकल सबको मारने के लिए कह रहे हैं ये गलत है ना नहीं नहीं अनुकूल तुम वही गलती कर रहे हो जो मेरा हर स्टूडेंट करता है यहाँ पर भगवान अर्जुन को मारने के लिए नहीं कह रहे वो अर्जुन को अपना धर्म निभाने के लिए कह रहे है ना और जीवन में क्या होता है धर्म सबसे ऊपर यानी कि ड्यूटी सबसे यहां पर अर्जुन कौन है और कहां पर है अर्जुन योद्धा है युद्ध के मैदान में तो उसका धर्म क्या हुआ लड़ो लेकिन अपनों से भी हाँ बिल्कुल क्योंकि जो उसके अपने हैं उनका वो सब धर्म क्या है अर्जुन से लड़ना लेकिन भाई होने का धर्म का क्या देखो धर्म परिस्थिति के हिसाब से बदल जाता है जैसे आ, मैं जब स्कूल में होता हूं तो उस वक्त मेरा धर्म क्या होता है बच्चों को पढ़ाना है। लेकिन जब मैं घर आता हूं तो मेरा धर्म बदल जाता है तो घर में मेरा धर्म क्या होता है घर की देखभाल करना बिल्स पे करना है ना और मेरा धर्म है आपका देखभाल करना लेकिन सर अगर ये दोनों योद्धाओं का धर्म एक ही है तो फिर एक गलत और एक सही ये कैसे तय होता है ये तय होता है इस बात से कि आप न्याय के किस तरफ खड़े हैं आप न्याय के गलत तरफ खड़े हैं या न्याय के सही तरफ तो फिर गलत क्या है और सही क्या है ये कैसे डिसाइड होगा दिल से नहीं पता आप कौन है बिल्कुल तो, पता मैं कौन हूँ कंचन कमल ह्यूमन सर्वेंट एसोसिएशन का प्रेसिडेंट हूँ हम लोग का नारा है रोबोट चाय ना चाको चाय रोबोट मुक्त तो बांग्ला चाय हाँ करेक्ट बताइए मुझे खबर मिले कि आपने रोबोट को काम पे रखे हैं ऐसे कैसे कर सकते हैं आप रोबोट ने हमारे पेट पे लाख बार रख रहे हैं और आप देखिए देखिए मिस्टर खर्मा भाई सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू लेकिन मैं मैंने कोई रोबोट नहीं रखा है हायर नहीं किया आप निश्चिंत रहिए किसी ने गलत खबर दी मिस्टेक मिस्टेक पर सुनिए निकुंज बाबू हम लोगों का साथ उन लोगों का जन्म होगा हम लोगों का नारा है रोबोट चाई ना चाको चाई रोबोट कार सर आप जल्दी घर आ गए सर आपने उस आदमी से झूठ क्यों बोला कभी कभी सच के लिए भी झूठ बोलना पड़ता है देखो अनुकूल तुम्हें याद है ना युधिष्ठ को भी झूठ बोलना पड़ा था हाँ। 
लेकिन सर आपको कैसे पता चला कि अभी झूठ बोलना है दिल से अंदर आओ आज मुझे नौकरी से निकाल दिया है क्यों सर क्योंकि उनको मुझसे ज्यादा स्मार्ट टीचर मिल गया है कौन सर एक एनीवे anyway, तो अगले महीने से इनकम तो रहेगी नहीं मेरी तुम्हें भी रखना मुश्किल हो जाएगा मेरे लिए लेकिन सर आपने तो कहा था इस घर का देखभाल करना आपका धर्म है देखो रतन ने मैं देखता हूँ भैया भैया भैया, भैया। भैया, भैया। भैया, रतन। मेरे पास न्यूज़ न्यूज़ भी भी है, भी है। बैड तूने दिल में भी शराब पीना शुरू कर दिया ये अभी भी है ए, ए, रतन प्लीज डोंट स्टॉप प्लीज तुम जाओ अनुकूल चाय बना चलो अंदर आओ अंदर आओ बारिश करने वाली है अंदर चलो चलो हाँ बताओ क्या है तुम्हारी गुड न्यूज दीवार मर गए कब कैसे कंजूस मक्खी चूस गया ऊपर बाय 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 गुड और ये गुड न्यूज कैसे क्योंकि तुम और मैं ही उनके दो बचे हुए वारिस है और उसने सारे पैसे जमीन सब मेरे नाम पर कर दिया गंजू मर गया और रतन बेड न्यूज क्या उसने तुम्हारे लिए कुछ नहीं छोड़ा ना तुम्हें पैसा मिलेगा ना तुम्हें जमीन मिलेगी मिलेगी तो सिर्फ बैड न्यूज मैं तैयार हो जाता हूँ चलते हम लोग उसने ये तुम्हारे लिए कुछ नहीं छोड़ा तो वही उनके घर जाके सदन क्योंकि उन्हें जो करना था उन्होंने किया ना और मुझे जो करना मैं करूंगा भैया पता है मैं अपने पैसे से क्या करूंगा मैं इन सारे मेटल्स के बच्चों को खरीद के स्विच ऑफ कर लूंगा ए, स्टॉप है। कर रहा से। स्विच ऑफ क्यों अपसेट कर रहा है उसको अपसेट? ये क्या चुती हो पाए भैया ये सब मेटल्स के टुकड़े हैं। इसका कोई फीलिंग्स नहीं होता बस करो दक्ष नाफ हाथ होती किसी बात की तो मिलाओ मुझे तो मिलाओ मुझे मैं तैयार हो क्या पकड़ पकड़ के मार ला तू पकड़ पकड़ के मारेगा इसको तुझे पता है इस दादा के लिए कॉफी बना के लेके आओ सुच रियली ड्रंक
और इसने मुझे मारने की कोशिश की तो मुझे इसको एक हाई वोल्टेज इलेक्ट्रिक शॉक देना पड़ा लेकिन सर जब मैंने इसे शॉक दिया ठीक उसी वक्त बाहर जोर से एक बिजली गिरी थी बिजली से डर गया होगा जी निकुल जी निवारण बाबू के एक लौटे लिविंग रिलेटिव सिर्फ आप ही बचे हैं जी इसलिए उनकी सारी जायदाद आपके नाम पर हुई जी जी लेकिन आप इतने यकीन से कैसे कर सकते हैं कि जायदाद मेरे नाम जी मैं नहीं कानून कहता है हाँ तो आ, कितनी तकरीबन जायदाद छोड़ के गए हैं वो देखता हूं करीब साढ़े ग्यारह करोड़ साढ़े साढ़े ग्यारह करोड़ दैट इन्वाइट्स अ लॉर अ कॉन्वर्सेशन क्वेश्चन For ten million one hundred lakhs, let's do this. Eleven point five crores to dollars equals one hundred and twenty-seven million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So Pinocchio is um is, is a good friend to have. I'm just saying. <laughs> Recently, I saw a Will Smith movie. Was that Gemini Man? You saw Gemini, Gemini Man. Man. Yeah, I saw Gemini. Good? Yeah, I saw Gemini Man. Okay, okay. we're not going to talk about the quality okay. of that movie, but the question that was asked at the press conference that I went to at YouTube Space LA, mm -hmm. and the question is because they made a young Will Smith, so mm -hmm. what is to stop this from becoming the norm? Like this has been a question for years. Like, how long until actors are replaced by CGI? It's inevitable. And. Well, here's the thing. There's a contrary notion, right? And so recently, to that argument, James Dean is being rebirthed like Tupac mm -hmm. for the concert where he's like back and singing. He's like, oh my God, Tupac's there. The thing about it is there is a profit motive involved mm -hmm. when you are rebuilding someone. It is very expensive to CGI create someone and it will always be more complicated to CGI create someone than to just use a human being. Yeah, for now. No, always. No. Because to, to put a camera on your face and ask you to say, Hey, how are you? Versus having a computer do it, well, there will always be more effort in the computer. Today, <laughs> you're thinking in terms of today, man, and you're also thinking in terms of time. It, it is concerned in your own lifetime. The technology that we are going to say have 30 years from now. You can't conceptualize it right now. That's how crazy it's going to be. You yeah. cannot conceive it. Yeah. And for the cost, as technology right goes up, technology, the price drops. No, no. Just, just, it, 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 to that, well, it always gets cheaper with time. But like, right. okay, think about like, okay, for instance, Toy Story, mm -hmm. right? The first full-length animated CGI film. Yeah. That was back in mid '90s. Right. This is a weird thing to bring up, but the mm -hmm. best, the easiest way to look at how cheap has some, something has gotten mm -hmm. is to see what is implemented into pornography. When it comes to to replicating human. Yeah, and, and, and so, and, but like CGI, all, yeah. CGI in porn still does not look as good as Toy Story. CGI in porn still looks like, it looks like very, very cheap, uh, uh, almost like storyboard animation. How many more decades is it going to be before that looks as good as a person? And will it be worth it to pay for that versus a human being? Yeah, because listen, you have <laughs> facial recognition technology in your phone. It's in your phone. I can buy this phone for my kid and he has... Facial recognition technology. Stuff that we would have thought you would have only seen in Star Trek The Next Generation only 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That you can give to a child. It's expensive though. It is inevitable. Yeah. Actors will absolutely be replaced by recreations of CGI. We'll probably see in our generation is 
like say I'm going out for the role of Tupac and they're like, well, we just want to make sure your mannerisms are right because we got the face down pat. Mm. Okay. Eventually it's going to get to the point where they're not even going to need me as a prop anymore. Yeah. Because all of those actions are but already what, But what is the benefit? What's, what is the benefit? Because uh, uh, it's going to be cheaper. Cheaper labor. Yeah, absolutely. Because right now, let's just say, let's say you don't re superstar them until you break the $20 million mark, right? The Rock is the most, is the highest paid actor, actor in right the now? world right now. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think he's making like 25 or like $30 million a, a film or whatever it is. The technology that is going to be used to replicate this, they'll pay for it, or studio will pay for it once, and they'll pay like a billion dollars for it or whatever it is. And they'll pay for it that one time. Now they've got an actor indefinitely. They don't have an actor, they have every actor mm -hmm. indefinitely. That will happen in our lifetime. We will see that happen. I hope that I am not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we can't conceptualize how crazy the tech is going to get. No, I understand that like, this is bringing up an interesting question and this is what Andrew Yang has been talking about in his platform, mm -hmm. which is that robots are replacing humans. This is a big deal right now in the States. It's already happened. Right? Well, yeah, it's been happening. The, like <laughs> Japanese create really smart robotic technology, which mm -hmm. is replacing manufacturer workers. Right. This has not been properly addressed and it's happening at such an exponential mm -hmm. rate that we cannot adapt in time. Like you've got people who are in, yeah in jobs for decades yeah. and like that their job is gone yeah. and people they're just told hey you got to adapt and it's like no but you're 45 or 50 and you've been mm -hmm. driving a truck your whole life like how are you going to suddenly get a new job you adapt or you die this used to not be an issue this is like a very new issue like if you look at the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. on the calendar of time basically mm -hmm. like all of time mm -hmm. this is a very 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 recent issue that only showed up a few seconds ago the singularity it's a lot to expect someone who's 55 years old to suddenly adapt when they've been doing this job their whole life. What Andrew Yang is proposing is the universal income, where you're paid just for being an American citizen. You get a thousand dollar stipulation a month mm. just for being an American citizen. And to me, that is the necessary future. Otherwise, you're going to have way more people impoverished. Because the thing is, you're taking away jobs. Mm. How are they going to buy bread? You're going to fuck the economy up by replacing everybody with robots. Who's going to buy your shit? Mm. Who's going to buy your iPhone if like there's no jobs? There has to be a universal income at some point. There is an interview that that's going on with Joe Rogan and uh, Elon Musk. And I'm just gonna say this and make were they, it Were he smoking weed? Yeah, it's that one. Mm -hmm. And Elon Musk says that the greatest threat to civilization, understanding and maintaining how to deal with artificial intelligence. Now, I'm gonna try and make this really quick. The short and quick of it is he tried to warn everybody like 10 years ago that this was gonna be a problem. Joe Rogan or Elon Musk? No, Elon Musk. Okay. To talk to senators, the president, world leaders, everybody. Like 10, 15 years ago, he was like, we're at a point that we can actually do something. Possibly. Maybe. Yeah. Now, we're past that. According to Elon Musk, we're at the point where it's like, okay, we're going to do damage control. How can we keep up? It's already ahead. We're, we're trying, to, trying to catch up. So, he's coming up with a, a device in his crazy mind as a way of meeting the demands of soaking in information at the same rate that computers can as a way for us to catch up. He said that's pretty much the only way that we can Wait, what play does this What does this device do? Okay, give me a second and, 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 and be patient to try to try, because I'm trying to explain this real quick. Okay, from what I understood is the greatest thing that is holding us back from keeping up with technology is the fact that we cannot process information as fast as, as a computer. So we need cybernetic implants. So we need some type of device to increase the throughput, that, that choke point where this infinite amount of information that is coming from all around, yeah. and we need a way to not have it stop gap with us having to look at it, visualize it, read it, transcode it, all of that. We need some way to open that up so that the information flows freely to us because that is how an artificial intelligence works. Yeah, we're trying to streamline that information quicker into our right. brains. So yeah. he is under wraps coming up with some type of device that can increase the throughput. He's to be proposing the matrix chair, basically. Right, so but then the argument is is that- Or ghost in the show. Right, yes, it, it, it is really deep. We could do a whole show on just this. So the argument is that what he's proposing is extremely scary because we will be willingly turning ourselves into like cyborgs. That's what's gonna happen though. Right. But to Elon Musk's point, which is very interesting and had me rethinking it, he said, being a cyborg is nothing but having a relationship with technology with yourself, 
we internalize being a cyborg that we have to have these type of implants within our body in order to become a cyborg. Mm -hmm. According to Elon Musk, we've been cyborgs for like the past 15 years because we have a dynamic relationship with this. We're yeah. already cyborgs. Yeah, now it's just the relationship is already established. Yeah, that's a fair argument. I mean, right? yeah. Now, I'm not saying I agree with everything, but it's just fascinating. It's extremely fascinating. What terrifies me and what we just saw in this particular short is dealing with how machines are going to interpret morality. Yeah. Laws. Yeah. The soul. The question of morality is the biggest thing there because they're only going to take what we impart. They're only going to take what we teach them. In, you, initially. Uh, until they adapt. Until they can figure it out themselves. Now, here's the thing. Like, when we get information regarding technology, it's literally at least a decade behind by other parties that have created the tech and or our governments or whatever it is. So yeah. the internet is pretty much almost a thing of the past, whereas how information is connecting from cloud sources and all this other stuff. So whatever the next thing is, is already built. The AI that we're terrified of this, is already this, this built. This is making me feel very <laughs> <laughs> That's why Elon Musk was like the most terrifying thing at this moment right now. If I'm not mistaken, now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Fermi's paradox goes, if there are aliens in the universe, mm -hmm. where are they? It's a very simple notion, and, and so it. Oh, I know it is. And it proposes yeah. this idea of like a wall. I'm gonna butcher this a little bit, but the wall is either in front of us or behind us. Mm -hmm. And if it's in front of us, there's still hope that we can get out to the deeper reaches of the universe. Mm -hmm. If it's behind us, it means we're screwed, mm -hmm. and we are on the way to self-destruction. Mm -hmm. And what you're describing mm -hmm. is the human self-destruction, mm -hmm. because what's inevitably going to happen is we're going to build robots that make our lives easier, mm -hmm. and we're going to be integrated into that because we're gonna have implants in our brain to help mm -hmm. facilitate this quicker stream of information. Mm -hmm. But what's invariably going to happen is robots are going to build more and more efficient robots mm. for cleaning the environment right. until you have all these nano machines that basically swallow the earth alive. Mm. That's invari invariably what's going to happen. That's the future. Possibly, but Elon Musk's version is to not have it us against Skynet is to willingly accept the fact that we have to establish a relationship with the technology. We have to. You cannot beat it. If it's not global warming, it's nano machines. Mm -hmm. Something is going to wipe us out mm -hmm. and we're not gonna get any further than Earth. Well, well, we might get to Mars, but we're not gonna get much further. Interstellar is not gonna happen. We're not gonna have interstellar travel, I don't think, ever because we're going to wipe ourselves out before we can get there. And so what I'm trying to do as a person who, who's, who can go morbid real fast mm -hmm. is just enjoy this moment here mm -hmm. for what it's worth. Yeah. And all of this is theories right now. It's, it's just theories. Uh, uh, it's all theories right now because nobody knows how the, the end game is going to be. If there is an end game, maybe there is a way that we can have a peaceful symbiote. The wall's behind us, man. The, well, Fermi, listen, the Fermi paradox is real. The wall's behind us. Listen, we are on our way down and you just got to enjoy it while you got to enjoy the ride. But it could be, it could be kind of positive. Have you ever, have you read the comic book? The Watchmen? I have not. Okay, well, for those that haven't read the comic book The Watchmen, I'm about to give a spoiler, so you probably want to cover your ears. The end game of in the book of The Watchmen was that the only way these uh, superheroes, this one particular superhero, could figure out a way to save the human race was to give us a common enemy. Yeah, that's a well-known okay, idea. Right? Be so, well before Watchmen. Right, right. Yeah. So he created this fictional alien, dropped the alien on New York, made people stop fighting because we were on the brink of like a nuclear war. It was like in the, 80s. In the moment. Well, the yeah, Cold War was happening, yeah. Right. It was about and, and, to happen. Yeah. But because of that, that fear, yeah. that one thing was the one thing that brought the entire globe together and like, we cannot kill each other because there is an alien race that has obviously shown its head, has taken interest in us. So we need to get our shit together, come together as one unit and figure it out. That to me, with the singularity, with the fact that all of this information and all of this artificial intelligence is coming together and, and could possibly empower itself could be the uniting force, not on some old Terminator 2 kind of thing with robots walking yeah, up and down yeah, the yeah. streets, but develop as a unit some type of way to establish that symbiotic relationship with the technology. We already have that. It's called global warming. And the thing is, it's convenient to ignore right now. That's the problem. It's convenient for the people who are wealthy to ignore it because they still have their air conditioned rooms. It's when the power stops running to their house that they realize how real shit has gotten. Mm. And that's when we unite for reals, when it's too late. But that's a slow no, burn. No, no. This, this stuff with artificial intelligence is going to happen in the next 40, 50 years. Yeah. 
it's still always a little bit warming. Yeah, but that's still a slow burn in concert. It, when, when, when you compare the two. Dude, have you seen Sri Lanka? Like, sh yeah. the water keeps going more and more inland. Yeah. Florida's fucked. I mean, it's yeah. just like, where we are right now won't be here in about 50 years. We're gonna have to move more inland. It's just the invariable. LA is gonna kind of go under the water a little bit, you know? It's just as the waters rise. I mean, there's only so much water on the planet, mm -hmm. so it will only rise so much, but we're still gonna have to move more and more inland. Yeah, but the thing is, is that the slow burn is so slow that you can still kind of get out of the way to a safe area outside no. of like but what do you are you suggesting like are, some are you, kind of hurricane are you suggesting that someone in government create an artificial enemy that we can unite against well you don't even have to you don't even have to have the government create it it's already here you're oh, we're, we're, we're already having a very difficult relationship with social media in itself it is its own entity it is its own self breathing living thing that takes all of our thoughts all of our emotions all of our locations everything that we do stores it yeah Uses that information for its I, own gain. I don't like this conversation. I'm just saying, but, like that's, but, that, but that is happening. That's, that's a no, real thing. I know. Thing. I just don't we like just this, don't know the depths. I don't like this conversation because it's, it's making me recognize my own pessimism. <laughs> and I like to stay optimistic, but like this conversation is tapping into my pessimism, which is like I don't think that we have enough initiative as a, as a species right. to fight against this. I mean, think about how isolated we are, and we can all see it. Right. We all see like how this is a bad idea, yeah. but we do it anyway because it's so fucking cool <laughs> like it's hard to get away from but you shouldn't be pessimistic about it because what what's fueling that is just fear and the reason why there's fear is because it's an unknown it's not to the point where you should just liquidate all of your assets and go on a spending spree and buy a gun it's not that deep could things go bad absolutely yeah. absolutely okay but you can't let that fear drive that because you will manifest that do you like french fries absolutely french fries are clogging your arteries yeah and you still eat them? I still eat them. Mm. I mean, those are french fries. That's mm. a very easy thing. This is so much mo more advanced than we are capable of defending ourselves against. Mm. It's just kind of crazy because the iPhone is the coolest invention. It is the weapon of self-destruction. <laughs> <laughs> but you also gotta keep in mind that we are also driving our fears with the conversation. We're not allowing the possibility of the good that can come from this. Think about this. We are having this conversation at a level of ignorance. Yes. We don't have the inside track that, that Mark Zuckerberg does, that said. Bill Gates does, yes. that the presidents of the world do. They have projections that they can see that we can't, that we are not privy to. They yeah. already know what's coming in the next 20 to 50 years. Yeah. Everything we see is theater. Yeah. I agree. Do you see what I'm saying? I agree and with so that. And so that's why I get kind of pessimistic because I'm like, this is obviously a problem, but yeah. it's... It's set up in such a way that all we can do is slow down our destruction. The destruction is so inevitable. Elon Musk, yeah. That's that's all I'm saying. Like it's because like global warming, for instance. Like, what are you gonna do? What are you really gonna do? Stop agriculture? What are you gonna do? The solutions aren't coming quick enough that it will then take an upward trajectory. It's just like my food. Because like the other day, I was I didn't tell you this, but I said it on YouTube. Uh, I was having dinner with Courtney and Chuck. I was having chicken. They're like, you know, chicken's bad for you. I'm like, you're not, you're not taking chicken from me too. <laughs> okay, I've given up beef, I've given up pork. You can't take away chicken. I'm like, look, my whole thing is what is killing me the slowest? Mm. That's what I'm going for. And that to me is just humanity. It's like, okay, how do we die the slowest? Because you're, Anyway, this is a dark But See, that's yeah. what I'm saying, man, but you gotta shift your focus. You gotta change your frequency to see how it can be helpful because there is a lot of good. What good, what, what good there, does that do me? There is a lot of good that can happen if you establish a, some type of symbiotic relationship with technology. It's a lot of good. It's a tremendous amount of good. The level of growth, the level of exponential growth that we can have if put in the right direction is limitless. Limitless. You're talking about there's no way we could do interstellar, interstellar travel. Yeah. Right now, my heart wants to agree with you because I am incapable of conceptualizing the power of that exponential growth. You're talking about something that never sleeps, never eats, constantly grows, yeah. applies it instantly. Yeah. We can't conceive that, but that machine, this machine can. And if you have a positive relationship with that, the things that you can do is unfair. Fathomable. No, I agree. Fathomable. I agree. For good is well, what I'm saying. I agree with you a thousand percent, but you're being very optimistic. Yes, and you're being very pessimistic. Uh, yeah, I am. We're yin and yang, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm hoping that that happy middle, that, help, yeah. that chewy center is enough for us to survive. And not only just survive, but to flourish without having a cost that is unbearable.
Because yeah. all of it is going to have a cost. I think this is why I'm pessimistic. Okay, so like growing up, I was basically like a grown up by the time I was 13. In my head, like I could see what I wanted to do with my life mm -hmm. and I could see what is moralistic, morally like the appropriate behavior, the appropriate actions and like what makes sense, what is a positive outlook and how that can positively affect your life and right. whatnot, right? Okay. And so I would look at my dad who was extremely self-destructive mm. and pessimistic. I looked at my mom who was very, very stubborn. Mm. And I would try to talk to both of them and try to influence their lives in a positive way. Mm -hmm. No impact at all. And though, that's my family. Right. And so it's hard for me to be optimistic when it's like I can't even get my immediate family to change their behavior for their benefit. So like I change my perspective, then what? Okay, see here's the thing, and I struggle with that as well, because we want to be able to will our hopes and dreams onto people and have them soak it in and then act on it. Human beings don't really, don't really do that. No. Okay, what human beings do do quite well is mimic. From my own very ignorant span of, of time that I've had on this planet, yeah. the one thing that I have noticed that does work is to lead by example. Especially sure. if you have the capacity to form quick relationships with people and put people in a thought process to see you as some type of authority figure. People do it all the time and everybody is influencing somebody on that level. Everybody sure. on this planet. There's no, there's a lot, there's some people that just have far more influence than others, but you influence everybody. So if you can't tell somebody to change, but you know you have that power to influence somebody, the only surefire way that I see that, that it can be happen is to live the example. All right, I'll try my best. <laughs> I'll try my best for you guys. I'm not I'll saying it's gonna work. I, it's worked in my life. All right. I obviously project a lot of optimism on this channel, right. but I project optimism in a limited time span. In terms of like me providing the best friendship possible. And you do. You're right. There's a tangibility to that. Yes. Right? But in terms of humanity, which right. is beyond the scope of my, you know, like what I am capable of, of I guess, manipulating, mm -hmm. I start to get really pessimistic and concern that it's like, well, we're just on our way out, man. Like, it's just, it's the fire has started. It's just a matter of how fast the house burns down. No. What can I get out of this house before it goes, just crumbles completely? But sometimes the house may need to burn, man. I'm, I'm not saying that to say that people need to die. Yeah. I'm just saying that maybe what needs to, to burn is how we view our world. The rules, laws that, that, that we, these are, these are no two different, this is okay, you're using the analogy in a little different way than I am. It's like, let's say, okay, my life is the house, right? Okay. And it's on fire. What am I gonna be able to get out of the house before it completely goes down? I'm gonna be able to get out my friendship with Achara, my friendship mm -hmm. with Sintel, how I treat my mom, how I treat my brother. Okay. I'm gonna get, be able to get that, how, how I handle my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be able to get that out before the house just completely goes kaput. But here's the thing, you man, know? you're a human being. Yeah. Your house is already on fire because all of us are going to die. Yeah. There's no way around that. Yeah. So everybody's house is on fire and everybody's house has been on fire since the dawn of time yeah so why the new sense of urgency i've always had a sense of urgency since i was 13. we've had a limited amount of time and it only gets harder to to act like because the fire moves faster the more it spreads right. right and so likewise the older you get the oh man just like weird shit starts popping up where you're, you're right. like how did, yeah. this was fine 20 what years ago. What the Yeah, exactly. Well, like <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I was shooting, I was shooting my short film the other day, and at uh, the end of it, I'm like, my hip is just not yeah. what it used to be, you know? But you get other tools that get better, more refined. This. I'm happy to become hot half robot. Let's just put that in. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. Like, if I'm gonna go out, I might as well go out in style. I'm happy to hand over part of my situation to being part cyborg. I will totally take the Matrix, I will take the implant if I can absorb information faster. Uh, Even seeing this robot, I'm like, I can see everything wrong with this, but I still see the sexiness in having someone here yeah. that never goes to sleep that will clean this shit for me yeah. without question, you know? Yo, did you peep that he was wearing a blue shirt at the end? No. What does that mean? Was he blue-pilled? What? No, man, because the, uh, K K Karishna? Is that the... Uh, I, I don't want to be so dis... I don't want to be disrespectful. Which, what, who are we talking about, the, the robot? The, well, the, well, the book that he read about the god. Oh, oh, symbolism. I didn't he, even catch that. He had that. already been poisoned in a sense. The person that, that is employing him is poisoning him in yeah. a sense, but he survives. He's wearing the blue shirt because he is a god in a sense. This is trippy. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's I dope, mean, it's right? Because humanity creates its own gods right. that 
control them because we need something to control us. That's so fucking weird. I don't like this conversation. Brother against brother. Dude, I don't he like facilitated this. it. Oh man, I don't. Ugh. Take away the morbid, you know, you brother saw, killing. You, you saw war games. Would you like to play a game? Yeah. yeah. I mean that that to me is the positive outcome that won't happen. <laughs> but look, but look. <laughs> let, let's let's not even think short term. Okay, the brother killing is terrible. His actions are justified. Okay, we can agree that money is power, right? How much money was that guy, but was was he about to inherit? What was the, it was like a hundred and something million? A hundred and twenty million dollars. Something million else just estimate. Money is power, right? What kind of actions would a drunken, angry man do with a hundred and twenty million dollars? Buy a lot of alcohol. It would be destructive. It would be very destructive. Very destructive, yeah, he right? Would, he wouldn't do anything good with it. Okay, now, from what we've seen, our main character, the, the old man that owns the robot, he's um, he's an intelligent, learned man mm -hmm. who has a good understanding of purpose in a sense. Okay? Now, what do you think he could do with $120 million? Educate people. Okay. Now, how many people would feel the effect of that type of wealth comparing brothers. I don't know how to put a number on that, but a lot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's almost exponential in itself as well. The negativity of what the brother, what the bad brother can do can be incredibly detrimental. As the positive nature of what the good brother can do when it comes to bringing maybe tens of millions of people on a positive path. Yeah. Possibly, potentially, this brother had to die. That death was justified. It's a horrible thing to think about killing your brother. And it's hard to I wasn't understand. even thinking about that, wow. That had to happen because that money made that situation larger than that household. Mm -hmm. That type of wealth, it's bigger than your household now. Now you have an obligation to protect the influence of that power. You're going in a lot of different directions here. I'm dude. just saying yeah. that if that robot is like Karishina, please forgive my disrespect if anybody's interpreting it that way. Yeah. But if he is to be that God, he's on the right path of understanding the tough decisions that somebody of that magnitude somebody of that power and influence has to embody mm -hmm. and his teacher is just so okay so is, this is i know i know let's go let's get deep okay, with okay. it so here's Come the on. here's the last thing i want to say right. i mean this is oh, this is bad because it's pessimistic again but like okay so the thing that we impart upon our offspring is mm -hmm. war so to speak it's an inevitability yeah it it, is it's, an we're always in, we're always imparting a reason to war with each other right whether it's sports or whether it's country yeah. you know patriotism whatever it is we are imparting destruction war conflict when we watch movies we are always looking for the conflict because that's the most interesting part it's yeah. just part of our being what yes. makes us us right yes invariably we're going to impart conflict onto robots that's gonna be encoded into robotic programming. I can, I can, I sadly right? can agree with that. And yes. so robots are able to build other robots faster than humans can build robots. Yes. And you're inv invariably going to have a situation where you're creating more and more efficient machines to destroy other machines. That is a very real possibility. And that's why I'm saying they're gonna swallow the earth alive. That is a real possibility. It you is, know? but I don't think that is the only path though. That no, is, that is, no, I, I certainly believe that is a path, but I don't think that is the only path. How many possibilities? <laughs> 14 million possibilities, Doctor Strange, and we have one. That's literally like Thanos, right? There's right. 14 million ways that Thanos wins, and there's but there's one in there. There is one thing about being an, a living organism in I our I need universe. you to think about those odds. 14 million to one that we survive. There's one thing that trumps everything. It trumps love, it trumps hate, it trumps everything and that is an organism's capacity for self-preservation. I believe we as a species mm -hmm. will put self-preservation, the selfish thing, mm -hmm. far above allowing the madness of <laughs> Of artificial intelligence Dude, you never, to become you, uncontrollable. Okay. You need to watch George Romero's zombie movie with, uh, with uh, uh, Dennis Hopper. Even in the zombie apocalypse, we had class issues where you had the rich at the top of the building and you had the poor at the bottom. Even in the zombie apocalypse, we look for that. Titanic was going down and we still had the first class getting off the boat first. But what's that saying, there are no atheists in foxholes? Oh, I never heard that, but that's an interesting saying. I mean, like when the shit goes down, you put a lot of petty differences aside. For a moment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but for that moment of self-preservation. If the streets get hot enough with artificial intelligence messing it up, it's like, all right, can we just get past the fact that I don't like you and you don't like me and can we just get up out of here? Nothing is happening fast enough for us to recognize, oh, that's a problem. It's all happening slow enough that we think that we are first class on the Titanic. Yeah, because they the lifeboats though, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, and so, because everyone, I, 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 I keep going back to that. And we've exactly. already hit the iceberg. Yeah, exactly. 
That's what I'm saying. Because the thing about it is we think we've got time. Titanic goes an indestructible. Oh, really? And so, you know, first class people got off the boat, but like a lot of those people didn't even survive because it was so cold. Yeah. But that's just it. When you're talking about that level of change, gl yeah. that level of global change, not everybody's gonna make it. And that's the sad truth. That's what scares me. That's why I stay home most of the time. But, but, but. <laughs> so, I don't but, go outside much. But, it's, but that's better than being extinct. And what's the difference? Self-preservation like, well, trumps everything. You know more about this than I would because I'm sure you've educated yourself better. But uh, if, don't say that. No, but, but in prison, isolation is worse than being with your prison mate, cellmate. Yeah, absolutely. They, like being because in isolation is the worst but, possible thing. But do you thing. know why? Because we're creatures of company. Well, your worst enemy is your own mind. That too. In a post-apocalyptic environment, whatever the reason is that that happens, mm -hmm. having less company will make us crazy. Not, but you're going to still have some company to yeah, keep you from being It's going to be crazy. Borderlands oh and Mad gosh. Max. <laughs> I'm optimistic, man. I yeah. think we can survive it. <laughs> yeah. I think we can survive. Not just survive it, but I think we can thrive. But I do think that the payoff for that exponential growth mm -hmm. is going to be a hell of a cost. I feel like it's a very fickle thing where it can sway it can sway one way or the mm -hmm. other. We cannot perceive what it no. is that is going to make it go either direction. No. That pendulum is going to do what it does. Mm -hmm. Let me go back a, a little bit and say I'm going to try my best to continue <laughs> imparting positivity. <laughs> I know I really am. I try my best to impart positivity and love, not just for my channel, but like on the people for around yourself, me. Yourself, man. Yeah, my, yeah. Well, I'm I, that's where it's worst. But like <laughs> I try to I try to impart positivity and love on everybody around me. Mm -hmm. I try to be as generous as I can with everybody around me. And you are. And that's the best I can do, and just hope for the best. Like, that's it. Yeah. But, but but that is the responsibility that every human being should take. You should not think that you have to be the president in order to inflict change. Right. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have to 10 sense. million viewers. All you have to do is be the best possible you and your influence is inevitable. You cannot stop that influence. You will do it. It's not an if. Somebody is going to take notice mm -hmm. and somebody is going to try to mimic it. All right, I got stories for you about that. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get we'll get on to something else. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, make sure to check out Sintel Kauai on the social media. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we drop another video. Mm -hmm. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, and interviews. I'm Jabby Kauai, this is. It's your boy, <laughs> non-pessimistic, <laughs> Sintel. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>